earlier in the week, we ended up getting an update for Call of Duty World War II, in which we ended up seeing a couple of different things to kick off week four of the Resistance event. Now, while we still have a week after this, in which we'll see some other cool stuff being implemented, one of the big features of this week is that of Gun Games Return, something that wasn't really talked about all that much going into the Resistance prep. Whenever we got a trailer talking about the Resistance event, whenever we got some pre-release stuff, and all in that way of hyping up the event itself, we never really had anything to look at in terms of gun game, but we ended up seeing things like Prop Hunt and Demolition being the game modes of choice that were being showed off because they were brand new to World War II. Gun game, we already had within the Winter Siege event, and now it's returning for what may be fan service, but regardless of the reasoning why, it's back. But that said, while it is something that is back for this week, that's something in which you're probably going to see a lot of people asking, why is this not a stable mode? Why is it something not in the game? And with as each refresh of each week, that topic of a discussion is valid because we end up seeing the beloved game mode come back only for a very short limited period of time. So the question that is on the table today is why are these not stable? Why are they not something that are implemented fully within World War II? That's what I'm going to talk about here today in this video and give you guys a little bit of maybe of a deeper understanding, but then also give my little thoughts and feedback a little bit further as to why they may not be coming all the time as something that you can hop on, say on a random Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of the week, say in a couple of months down the line, why they are not just stable and implemented in the game, such as a TDM, War, Domination, Search and Destroy, those other kinds of modes. So this is going to be a little bit of an open-ended discussion and something that you guys can feel free to give your thoughts down there in the comment section down below. It's a little bit more op-ended in terms of the presentation of this video compared to what we normally do and maybe say a showcase, but nonetheless, I just want to get a little conversation going on the topic. But let's jump right into it. So the actual idea of why we don't have as many game modes as to previously, we've actually discussed that a little bit, and it's the same sort of scenario in which why can be picked up from the topic of why there's not modes at launch compared to what we had previously in other years, and it can be placed in the topic of discussion pertaining to gun game, demolition, prop hunts, and other things like that that we might see sprinkled throughout in terms of, say, a community playlist. So just to reiterate that fact, and it's actually something that Sledgehammer has actually actually stated in their wording is that they don't want to force the community to have a fragmented player base. Now, what this means in layman's terms is that players, if there are more game modes, will have a worse experience in terms of connection as compared to if there are lesser number of modes to choose from in which they'd have a better connection. So how this all relates back to each other comes down to the core of the matchmaking process itself. As was a meme a couple of months ago, connection is king, as Condry put it, is the way that the match matchmaking system works itself. When we had this whole debate on skill-based matchmaking, is it a thing, is it real? Connection is King was the thing that popped up in which Condry tried to reassure everybody in the community that the way that matchmaking is at its core and at its base decided is by ping. So the lower ping that you have should be reflected in the number of players that also have lower numbers of pings compared to say if you were playing somebody from across the world with maybe many seconds of delay, not even just milliseconds of delay. So it all really comes down to that connection is King and not skill-based matchmaking, and that's where this sort of explanation cropped up from initially. So if we take that logic by applying this, we can end up seeing that each individual playlist has to have its own matchmaking in itself. You can't have somebody connect who is, say, theoretically a 10 millisecond ping. You might be a 10 millisecond ping. You might be a perfect match for each other to play a game online. But if somebody goes into TDM and then one goes into domination, you obviously can't match together. So each playlist has their own individual matchmaking in itself, in which ping has to be selected for each to match players up. So when it comes down to it, the more players that you have across a smaller number of playlists to choose from, that means you're going to be probably getting the better experience compared to if there were less players in each individual playlist, but more playlists to choose from overall. So that's something in which it comes down to that connection base on how matchmaking is prioritized, and then you end up getting a better game quality as a result. And in an ideal situation, that makes complete and total sense. But of course, there is still going to be people that want to see prop hunt, that want to see demolition, that want to see gun game, but just can't have it. So unfortunately, we are subjected to these sort of waiting periods. And some people may even just still be like, well, my connection's not that great as is. I still get matched up against players that seem like they're from across the ocean and from a completely different region of the world. And while that might actually still happen, that could be determined by a number of many other factors within 
and matchmaking that we as the public don't have direct access to view and so therefore it just seems like something like skill based matchmaking crops up or some other factor that might take away from this connection is king. But at its core and at its base that is the reasoning that Sledgehammer has given and on a realistic standpoint, it does make sense in the way that each individual matchmaking system has to prioritize connection. So you end up taking out the number of players in each playlist, and then you spread that potential connection base a little thinner. But outside of connection issues, it seems like we have another reasoning that could be very much so applied. And I think that personally, this is a great way to approach it as well, despite me as well being like maybe many of you guys that really want to see prop hunt, demolition, gun game, and all these other modes added in. And some of the ones that even aren't in the game at the moment, say like Infected or another unreleased game mode called Control. Another reason here for this is simply to keep the game fresh. We talked a little bit about in a video a couple of days ago, World War II as a whole and how really it might be tough to compete with the last year in 2017 of Call of Duty because we have Black Ops 3, Modern Warfare Mastered, Infinite Warfare, all giving us content and it seemed like as a consumer we had something brand new to talk about or play around with almost every week or maybe essentially every other week and that's probably a more so accurate statement is that we actually did get pretty much something every two weeks at least. So when we have this to go to World War II in which it's only one supported game in that year, granted we are having some DLC weapons dropped within Infinite Warfare, but that's still something of an afterthought that not many people have gone back to take advantage of. But World War II is that main supported title once again. We don't have three active titles, so we're not getting content given to us as fans nearly as much as what we had last year. So on that front, it seems stale, it seems dry, it seems slow, but one way to remedy this is to keep having things like seasonal events, like Winter Siege, like the Resistance event, like some things that may be coming up in the future, and also adding in modes that are specific for a very limited amount of time in each of those. To give players something that they don't have immediately to unlock, say like DLC weapons, at the beginning of the event, that's something in which we had to wait four weeks to see Gun Game come within this, and the last time we saw it was back in the Winter Siege event. So we had a small win of time and then a break afterwards to play this and therefore hypes everybody up to try and go and play these again while they still have the opportunity to. So in that sense and in that capacity, it keeps the game fresh compared to where we might just have the same game droning on and on for months. And if we had it in a regular playlist, say like a TDM domination or war search and destroy, those modes might still be the constant ones, but ones like Gridiron, they've slowly dwindled from where they were at launch. Whereas they might've been new and cool they don't have the same player base as what they did whenever the game first initially launched. So to keep from that being stagnated, to keep that from losing player numbers, that's something in which these are added back in to not only give brand new content to the players as a whole, but also to keep the modes exciting and to keep players already wanting to go back to them. So unfortunately, that is only obtained by keeping it limited time and by keeping it something that we don't see as a stable mode within World War II. But again, at its core, I think it makes sense and might even be a smart decision and something that thinking about it a little further, maybe I jump on board with a little bit more. I might not necessarily like the reality of it, but I do like having a large number of players be excited for those modes when they do come back. And when we talk about maybe even upcoming events, what we saw within Winter Siege to Resistance, it was only a few weeks off. So it's not like you're gonna have a massive multiple month spell of missing out on a certain mode. Though I'm not putting it out of the realms of possibilities, it just doesn't seem realistic. That's something in which we might even see something for say St. Patrick's Day in the Resistance event in which we only have two weeks off or so before say what I like to call Shamrock Siege just for fun theory's sake maybe that takes off and we see something like Infected added in or we see the return of Demolition or Gun Game or Prop Hunts for that entire event as well sprinkled throughout the multiple weeks that we'd have for that. So going forward there's a lot that we can end up seeing added in either what we've already seen with these limited time modes or maybe even more added in like the way of Infected or other unreleased game modes that were still in the game code. That's something in which we now will see this probably continuing in this same trend of just events and limited modes here every so often. It's not something that they are going to be stable and for the reasons that we just mentioned, but that is what makes sense and I think how we're going to be seeing it 
going forward. So that said, I think this is where we're gonna wrap it up. Love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. Of course, there is no right or wrong answer with all this kind of stuff. It's just an open discussion like we talked about at the beginning of the video. So let me know your thoughts. Do you guys think this is a good way to approach this? Do you think that you'd be willing to sacrifice a little bit of your connection to have some of the modes like gun game, infected, demolition, prop hunt, if they were stable modes, would you be willing to sacrifice some of that? Or is it something you guys don't care about at all and you couldn't care less, you're just here to play? Whatever it may be, feel free to let me know down there in the comment section down below. But that's where we're gonna wrap it up. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding Call of Duty World War II. Any deep dives on explanations like this kind of stuff, best class setups, tips, tricks, news, information, all that good stuff we got you covered here up on the channel. So if any of it interests you, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. And if you guys wanna follow me over on Twitter, that's the best place to get connected with me outside of YouTube, practically live on Twitter. So if you guys wanna strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, link is down there in the description below. And finally, if you guys wanna follow me over on Instagram, that's one front that I'm trying to get a little bit more active with in terms of, so if you guys wanna follow me over there, that link is down there in the description below as well. So all that said and out of the way, hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Mata's an espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.